what's up, friends? Welcome to Pendel Youth Leadership Live. I'm Joe Cal, Youth Director. I'm Mike Kubis, your Youth Alive Missionary, and it's a great day to be with you this Tuesday afternoon. That's right, Tuesday. Today is Election Day, and man, it's exciting, Mike. Yes, it's, exci- it ex- it's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting. It, yes, it Let's is exciting. Let's go. Let's go. I know I'm sure all of you are done with all the political ads and uh, things like that. But I'm, I- I'm done with all the text. <laughs> That's what I'm done with. So you've been getting all the spam texts? Yeah. You know, I shared earlier, I got a text from Lyft say, hey, 50% off your drive to your polling place. I'm like, I can literally walk to my polling <laughs> place. Thank you, though. Nice. Nice. So. Hey, uh, if you're watching with us, uh, comments, your name in the comments, and also things like that, like and share. And we're just excited to have you guys be a part of our broadcast today. And um, so I love what God's doing across our network, Mike, um, this past weekend. Um Pendel held a young adult retreat. Yeah. And um, so some of you guys might have had your churches represent, um, but we had uh, a little over, I'd probably I'd say a little less than 300 uh, young adults. That's awesome. Uh, the BCC for the one of our Pendel young adult retreats. That's good. Led by kudos to Adam Olson and Luke Adams Let's for go. your spearheading that um, that adventure and, and just what God did, man. The weekend was powerful. Yeah. Um, so uh, so kudos to you guys for leading that. And what a, what a great time. Man, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> Tuesday's great. Elections are great. But it's just great to be in ministry. Amen. I love what God is doing. And, uh, and to be in a room, like it's different friends. Like we deal with teenagers all the time. And some of you guys yeah. do the, um, the co-leading of young adults and youth pastoring. Um, but it's different when you're in the room with the almost 300 young adults. Um, and, uh, and I said this to them because I, I had the opportunity to speak on Sunday, but I had said to them, I said, man, what's really exciting is that when you speak to young adults, like they're there because they want to be. That's true. Like yeah. students kind of sometimes are forced by mom and dad or mm-hmm. even from you guys, like, hey, sit in the chair, you know, <laughs> stand and worship. But like young adults, yeah. like they don't have to be there. Right. And they all, they came out for that, for that weekend. So it was, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and just seeing some of the, unfortunately I wasn't able to be there that weekend, this weekend, but uh, seeing all the different posts and hearing even testimonies, I was talking to uh, Rob Fur at the Bonjourno yeah. Conference Center, Pastor Rob. And um, he said it was an awesome weekend. So kudos good. to you guys. Yep. And kudos again to Pastor Luke and Pastor Adam and everyone that made that weekend successful. That's right. And hey, uh, if you, um, if you are in this group, lead a young adults can you let us know just type it in the comments hey man i also lead young adults um i just want to know who's doing both to be great opportunity to keep uh you know keep keep both ministries going forward and yeah. see, see what you're doing for young adults and things like that so that would just be helpful and beneficial for us um and because i think the future is bright i really yeah. do i really do so um, but anyhow, so that was my weekend this past weekend. Nice. And um, so what did you do this past weekend? Uh, this weekend we went to go visit family out in Quakertown, um, both Rachel's family and then my side of the family. Um, originally we were supposed to go to my nephew's second birthday party because okay. him and um, Jaron are five months apart. However, he came down with a sickness and it just wasn't proper for us to just be there and gotcha. everything like that. So we were able to just drop off the gifts and, and say happy birthday quickly that way. But um, it was good just to spend time with uh, Rachel's parents. I know uh, they loved being Gigi and Pop Pop, so okay. just watching them be grandparents um, was fun. As nice, well, so nice, nice. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed your weekend. And um, it's November, not long from, uh, no, I'm sorry, not far from uh, from Thanksgiving. But before Thanksgiving, we do have a wonderful retreat. Next Let's week, go! It's our YPR Youth Pastor Retreat. So hopefully, mm-hmm. looking forward to seeing. I think we saw a little over sixty registered so far. So uh, it's going to be a phenomenal retreat. Mm-hmm. Super excited! We have Pastor Aaron McNatt. He's going to bring forth the word, um, and we're just—I'm super pumped to hear and see what God's going to do this weekend Amen. or this week coming up. Yeah, it's in nine days. We're excited nine for days. that. Nine days. So again, Thursday, November 14th through the 16th. Registration is still open until Monday. So if you're like, if, if you've been like, I don't know if I should go or not, you still have some time mm-hmm. for some last minute registration. So it's open until Monday. We really encourage you to be there. It's a great time just to, to be refreshed, yes. restored, and renewed going into 2025. Yes, and then um, also some other updates that we have. Um, fine arts registrations, they'll be up soon. I just want to give you a reminder that with fine arts season, uh, some of you guys have already started prepping, planning your, your teams and things like that. 
Um, we are doing the same digital online registration like we did last year. So if you're on our website, you're trying to look for all those things, they're not up and running yet. Um, we're still waiting for the national office to, to link our, our festival. But just anyway, just to let you guys know, there is some information on our website. Uh, but when we do go live with it, we will let you know and post it in this group. Um, and uh, I think we'll have to register sometime in, in February. So I awesome. just wanted to make you aware that it is still the online digital registration we did last year. Perfect. And then we also have our AIM trip coming up in July of 2025, the 19th through the 26th. Uh, the application is on our website, pendelyouth.com. Uh, the application deadline is December 12th, and I know applications are starting to come through. I yes, think sir. I saw one recently on Hannah's desk. So uh, just make sure, guys, that if uh, you or your students are signing up for it, please make sure to get them in before December 12th. That's right. And then uh, winter retreats in January. Uh, we have back-to-back -back weekends, uh, three great weekends. We have Elliot from SoCal, <clears throat> um, Steve Sabota from the Called Ministry Network. I'm sorry, the Called Ministry Team um, from the National Office, and also Lee Rogers will be coming Ooh. in for week three. Uh, so I'm just super excited for what God's going to do in those three weeks as well. Cost is 172 for group registration, so um, we do have some groups registering already. Um, so just be mindful of those things. Um, just also be mindful that I, I don't like to pressure people in registering, um, but I don't want you to miss the opportunities. So yeah. just make sure you register on the time and manner and just make sure you're able to get in the weekend that you want to get into. So Absolutely. And then finally, for a save the date, we have a, what is called the called event coming up on February 8th. It's a Saturday. It's a one-day event at the University of Valley Forge. We'll have more details to share with you guys about that, but we just want to put that on your calendar uh, for February 8th, uh, the called event. Yes, and this called event is for anybody that feels called to ministry. Mm -hmm. um, so be, there'll be some teenagers there, some young adults, some old adults, and just really trying to encompass like what it is to be called into ministry and to, to nurture and foster that call. So uh, more information will come out, but that is going to be located at the University of Valley Forge. And it's just a one-day event. So Awesome. And then last, before we go into our devotional today, uh, PDYN emails that go out um, consistently. We hope that you guys are receiving them uh, where you get an opportunity to rewatch this video and updates going on at the network. If you're not receiving those and you'd like to be on that list, please put it in the comment section um, to be a part of that email list. So, um, so let's go into today's, today's devotional. Not going to lie, a little nervous <laughs> about it. Uh, but uh, as I was um, praying through and thinking about it, I was thinking, man, Lord, what, what should I what do you want me to share with uh, with everyone today? I was actually reminded of a sermon I did about four years ago at Morningstar during the last election cycle. Mm. It was called The Joy in the Midst of Anything. And um, today I just want to remind us as leaders um, that we are called to lead as citizens of heaven. Um, now, this devotional isn't necessarily going to tell you how you should vote, who you should vote for. You've gotten <laughs> all of that at this point. Um, what I want to talk about is how do we lead afterwards, right? We should be leading in a biblical sense before the elections. And, and, and again, you've get, received all that information, but how do we lead afterwards when it comes to being citizens of heaven? Because um, let's be honest, there are going to be people, including some students, probably in your youth ministry that will not be happy with whatever the outcome will be. And then that's on either side of the party. I'm not here to... Um, pick sides here. But um, I want us to go to 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, starting at verse 13. Uh, and this is what he says. For the Lord's sake, submit, for the Lord's sake, submit all, submit to all human authority, whether the king, king as head of state or the officials as he appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. And if, it, if it is God's will that you it is God's will that your, your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slave, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of the believers. Fear God and respect the king. Mm -hmm. Now, for context, that's saying a lot from Peter, mm -hmm. right? Because... He, let's take our Western mind. Like we, we still live in a country where we have the opportunity to vote for, for those who are in uh, leadership at this time, it was an emperor. It was like, who's ever next, whoever's born into it. And you know, they were getting ready with Nero and, and everything that was happening in the Roman empire. And to read this, you're thinking 
Peter, have you lost your mind? <laughs> right? Like, what, what, what are you, what are you talking about here? And what, and I think for us, we, ha- we live in this tension of, we have to respect those that are in authority because ultimately God has a, in his sovereignty, put them in the authority, but also as well, when we submit to them, we also are also submitting to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who is Jesus Christ. And we have to learn to, to, uh, lead in this tension, but ultimately it comes to that we're leading as citizens of heaven first and foremost, Mm -hmm. and then citizens as the United States of America. Now there are things, let's be honest, there are going to be whoever is our next president, there are going to be policies, there are going to be ways that he or she may act that we may not like, we may disagree with and everything like that. Um, And some, some of those things, it's like, we don't really need to take the time to plant those, our flag there in that moment. But there are things that if it's against God's ways, mm-hmm. w- we need to submit to what God is saying versus ultimately what rulerships and king may do. And I think of like Daniel, right, and his friends. When they went into um, the country of Babylon after they were um, held captive, they were part of that culture, but they also were like, we're not going to let the culture dictate mm-hmm. Are how we're going to live. And we see that early on with the foods that were given to them. They're like, well, we know that you sacrifice these things to other gods. We're not, we're not going to eat that. And they put a test and they're like, wow, they're healthier than, than everyone else. So that's good. Um, when uh, the king, when King Nebuchadnezzar put the golden statue up, right? And everyone bowed down except for Daniel's three friends. And they're like, hey, you may worship all these gods and you may ask the people to worship you, but ultimately we stand our ground with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We're not going to worship uh, you. And Nebuchadnezzar wasn't happy about that, but um, we see that God saved them. And it also, that was probably one of the starting points where God uh, was going to save Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> as well. Um, and then finally with Daniel as well, when people, when the king was trying to get rid of prayer time, uh, and they say he couldn't pray, Daniel still continued to pray because he knew that was the thing that he had to do. That was the right thing he had to do. Um, and ultimately that saved him as well uh, in, in that point. And so my whole purpose, I guess what I want to share with us today is ultimately we have to lead and communicate to our students that we're leading uh, after the election as we are citizens of heavens. Um, I don't think your sermons on Wednesday should be a rant about why you're upset about which political leaders or le- you know leaders are are in uh, office, but at the end of the day, saying hey, we may not ne- necessarily like the outcome, but we're going to pray for our leaders. Mm-hmm. We're 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 going to submit to author- to the authorities of things that, um, again, if they don't dictate according to if they're not contradicting how we should live according to God's word, we'll follow the best that we can in those things. But ultimately. Again, we should lead as citizens of heaven, first and foremost, then lead as citizens of America. And Joe, I'm going to come to you because I feel like I'm like all over the place right now. (laughs) So I just think it's important that we don't get messed up with all the junk, man. Yeah. You know, so like don't, 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 like don't lose friendships and don't lose family members and relationships and don't lose students and you know, partnerships just because of one thinks a different way. Now, granted, yeah. you know, we have to, um, obviously, in order to go forward in what God's called us, you can't, um, everyone's not going to go with you. Agreed. Yeah. So you understand that concept, but for the sake of, like, arguing, and, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer, the Pro- Proverbs talks about, like, the foolish talk and stop arguing. Like, it's yeah. not worth it. It's not worth it. So just... Um, so, I, so I would just say, man, yeah, man, you submit to the Lord first. It really doesn't matter. I mean, um, what, one one of my, and I'll just, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'll just say this. One of my pet peeves is like, oh, well, Jesus is king. That's all that matters. He's the king tomorrow, too. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah. no, we're, we're not idiots. Um, so you have to, I think, uh, why well, I said I love election, like, we get an opportunity to vote. Yeah. You know? Um, so take opportunities and, and do do what you should do, man. And Right. Steward vote. steward that vote properly. That's right. right. And, and it doesn't really matter God's called you to the ministry. God's called you to lead where you're at, no Mm -hmm. matter who is in the presidency, no matter who's running your city, like no matter what. Um, And I think that's the concept that we have to get to is as ministers of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not serving my mayor. 
Yeah. I'm not. I'm not serving. I'm not serving. I'm serving the Lord. Yeah. And uh, that's the first and foremost. So um, when it contradicts your biblical morals and biblical what the word says, then I can't I can't subscribe to that. Right. Agreed. So and, 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 we, and we shouldn't, you know. So um, but man, I, I just don't don't get caught up in the mess, man. It's not worth it. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to, to you know, I'm also bef- doesn't matter who you tell who you're going to vote for and all that stuff, too, man. Just tell people who cares. <laughs> um, but just I, it doesn't really matter. I, I just yeah. I'm sorry. I just I just know when you look in the Bible, God's people are always taken care of. God's people will always change the landscape of a territory. Always yeah. the, 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 the government, no matter who is in charge, God's people somehow, some way by divine, you know, right. uh, um, intervention, God's people will always flourish, be blessed and or be given opportunities to see miraculous happen. Right. And I just think about that, like, okay, let's go back to with Peter and him in the Roman Empire. Yeah. They were, they, the early disciples were planting seeds in the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. Like, to the point, like, people use this against them, saying, like, oh, they're trying to overthrow the government. That's not necessarily what, not at all what they were trying to do. They were living for the king of kings, of, who is Jesus. Um, but they were planting seeds of that to a point years later. Mm-hmm. Roman, you know, the Roman Empire and things like that were like, we need to subscribe to these Christian values and seeing what they're doing, right? And like mm-hmm. we even we even see that in countries like I was listening to uh, a sermon, and it doesn't get this doesn't get talked a lot because it's in China, and you know China tries to stop uh, Christianity from spreading. Mm-hmm. But there was a there was a a group of people who were really addicted to drugs and everything like that, and the government knew of some people in another area that were Christians and they were living peacefully and things like that. And they brought them into this Mm -hmm. town and saw within like a 20 year period, how this town did a 180 because of the gospel message and how these people lived for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, while we may disagree with some things on certain aspects and politically, but if we live according to how Jesus calls us to live, who knows, you can, you can maybe change your, see your mayor's, heart be transformed absolutely. you can see communities like turn absolutely. for the gospel message so absolutely and i pray that that's where your faith is man yeah that we that we can see we can see things change in our communities like never before you know turn back turn back to god um you know i don't know just just the negative stuff that's happening like we can see god transform communities schools school boards yeah. you know just things like that man like that's where we should be that's where our focus yeah. should be god listen, give listen. us an opportunity to transform the community where you put us. Yeah, listen, if, F- if Ephesus was able to be flipped upside down for the gospel message, 100%. with the gospel being sent, and that one little community, um, why not in our communities, yep. right? Why not Why not see things that are of immoral, not of God, be flipped into prayer houses or, or where people gather for, for Bible studies and things like that? Um, yeah, I think it's really That's good. good. That's yeah. good. Be a man or a woman of God. That's all that matters. Amen. So, and right. lead in that way. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's all I have for today. Joe, you want to close this Let's out? Let's do it. Father God, I thank you for every person watching and listening. Father God, I thank you for our youth pastors and leaders that are serving hard, uh, wholeheartedly, Father God. Um, Lord, in moments, Lord God, just sometimes in seasons of life, Lord God, where, where they're juggling a lot, seems like a lot's going on in the world, in the church, in their own family life, Lord God. Um, Lord, I pray that they'll not question the call. I pray that they'll continue to stay strengthened by your word. Um, and Lord, I pray that they'll see a great increase, Lord God, by the end of this year for them and their families. Um, Lord, I pray for a great ministry, missional outcomes um, as well, Lord God. And let the ending of 2024 just be the icing on the cake for their year, Father. We love you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for our country, Lord God, the great, the great country of the United States of America, that we are allowed to do this right here. Um, and also preach the word of God. So I thank you, Father God. Um, pray, Father God, that we'll have a great election and um, and whoever I vote for wins. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Love you guys. See you guys next week. See you guys.